Tonight on College Press Box, we discuss some high times and low times in Longhorn basketball. We take it to the diamond to recap how the Longhorns did at bat this weekend. Look at results from Texas tennis and track. And discuss how Texas basketball can keep its momentum going. All this and more coming up on College Press Box. there and thanks for choosing to spend your Monday evening with us here on College Press Box. I'm Alanis King, joined alongside by Jake Lapin, and we're here to fill you in on all the latest in Texas sports. Now we know that many of Longhorn's sports teams spent their Valentine's Day weekend competing, but Jake, how was your Valentine's Day? It was nice. I spent the majority of it watching those Longhorns compete. Well, the men's basketball team did indeed compete on Wednesday, hosting TCU right here in Austin. Let's take it to the drum for highlights from the game. TCU leads the first half 3-2, and Cameron Ridley puts up the two to bring Texas up 4-3. And Kendall Vancey takes the pass to sink a three-pointer, taking Texas up 7-5. Yet again, another pass to Kendall Yancey, takes Texas up 10 to five, and TCU's Amrick Fields makes the jumper for two. Isaiah Taylor answers back with another jumper, taking Texas up 12 to seven, and Kenrich Williams makes the corner three for TCU. Uh, <laughs> Shauncee Collins is blocked by Cameron Ridley, and Isaiah Taylor goes for the rebound, taking down the court to pass to Javon Felix for the three-pointer, Texas is up. 19 to 10. Miles Turner takes it in and dunks it for two. Texas up 23 to 11. And Jordan Felix takes it again from the three point line, bringing Texas up 26 to 11. Yet another three for Jordan Felix, taking Texas up 29 to 13. And Connor passes it to Taylor. And another pass to Cam Ridley to dunk it. Texas up 37 to 19. Another pass to Cameron Ridley, who dunks it again. Texas up 46 to 35. And Isaiah Taylor passes it to Javon Felix for yet another three. Texas up 53 to 37. Texas goes on to win the game 66 to 43. The Horns followed up their win over TCU with another home game against Texas Tech. Here's how it all went down. Texas and Texas Tech, interstate Big 12 rivals at the drum. And here we go. Tech would strike first on Devontae Williams' three-point shot. They would go up 3-0 early on, but Texas would come back. Isaiah Taylor driving, somehow finds Miles Turner. He steps back, knocks down the corner three. Texas pulls within two, 12-10. Later on another Taylor drive, he would find Cam Ridley, who throws it down, pulls Texas within one, 20-19, and now Javon Felix gets the long rebound. He gives it up. He gets it right back. He hits the second of back-to-back -back threes for him as part of an 11-0 run. Texas up seven at the break. Second half now, here we go. Isaiah Taylor up top finds the freshman, Miles Turner, who had a career night. Texas leads 31-19. Prince Ebay decides he wants to get in on the fun. I'm big too, he says. Gets a block on Ann Ross's three-point attempt. And he wasn't done, going back the other way now. Isaiah Taylor to the rack, no. eBay, yes. Longhorns pull away, win the game by 15, and it's goodbye to all the rest. Here's Brooks Cabana with the full story. Return on investment. It's not a term regularly applied to athletes, but with Texas freshman Miles Turner, there certainly has been a running clock on his development. Against Texas Tech, the clock exploded. Uh, I was just confident. Um, past couple games, I didn't play with the same, you know, poise and the same confidence I have in the past. You know, everybody told me just go out there, and just play, you know, um, put everything aside and just, um, you know, do what I do best. It was his best. 25 career high points in conference. 
But beforehand, Miles was struggling, leading to extra gym time and long phone conversations with Coach Rick Barnes on how to be successful. After all of that work, Miles Turner played freely against Texas Tech, scoring 25 points, getting 12 rebounds, and blocking three shots. That's enough to get you local fame, get put on the Naismith watch, and even look high in the NBA draft stock. But Miles Turner has already said he doesn't care about most of that. It's about the expectation on the inside. The question is, did he find enough in the middle of the game against Tech that will help him provide that confidence and consistency in the games ahead? The road ahead is filled with five straight ranked opponents. And Miles is coming alive at the right time. And Barnes says the freshman has improved dramatically on the defensive end. I thought it was a, really the first time this year that he approached the game with a defensive mentality, that he was going to get lost on that end first. And I think by doing that, uh, even when he was on the outside of the zone, you could tell he was really engaged there. And without question, he did the best job. And he's done all year playing in the middle of it. He did the things that we've been talking about to him today. And uh, uh, so I hope it's a big confidence boost for him. Brooks Cabina, College Press Box. With us in the studio tonight is basketball analyst Mark Skull. Mark, how are you tonight? I'm great. How are you guys? I'm doing well, and so is the Texas basketball team. Uh, they're certainly doing well at the moment. While the team hasn't particularly lived up to the preseason hype so far, the Longhorns are coming off of three straight wins as they head into a tough stretch of games. Mark, is Texas getting hot at the right time? Well, if, it definitely is the best time for Texas to get hot because in the Longhorns' next five games, they'll be playing the five ranked opponents, three of which are on the road. It's not like beating Kansas State, TCU, and Texas Tech is anything to be brag about, but these next three games, the, well, this three-game winning streak could not have come at a better time because it will hopefully give them confidence against these five ranked opponents and possibly give them a chance to pull some upsets on the road or at home. I'm not saying that means that they are going to win these uh, five games against these ranked opponents, but it definitely gives them a better chance than normal. These next five games will be tough for the Longhorns, if, but if they come to play, don't be surprised if there's an upset or two. Well, Mark, it certainly was a favorable week for Texas with a lighter schedule, but these next five games will be tough for them, taking on all ranked opponents. How exactly does Texas keep on track through this next stretch? The key for Texas to continue this hot streak is to continue to play well offensively. Texas always gives their best effort defensively as they are currently ranked the fifth in the nation in rebounds and lead the Big 12 in block shots behind Ridley, Texas Turner, and eBay. Turner. Their defense will always be good as the offense that is the problem. Offensively, Texas during their three-game winning streak, the Longhorns have shot 50% from the field while their season average is only 44%. The past three games, the Longhorns have done a much better job of making their possessions count, and a lot of that has to do with the new starting lineup. By throwing Yancey and Turner in, Longhorns seem to uh, be playing with more urgency and more confidence on the offensive side of the ball. In order for Texas to keep on track, they must continue to develop offensively by getting the ball inside to Miles Turner and Cameron Ridley. By getting the ball inside, uh, teams will be forced to double team and open up shots from behind the arc for sharpshooters like Felix and Turner, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, Holmes. If Texas is able to utilize their big men and possessions uh, offensively, they have a good chance to keep this uh, train rolling. Well, the Longhorns do seem to be playing with more confidence right now, so maybe they can keep that train going. But Mark, what can you tell us about Coach Rick Barnes and his legacy? Texas head coach Rick Barnes re, uh, re reached his 600th career victory on Wednesday night as the Longhorns defeated TCU 66-43. It's nothing close in comparison to Coach K's and Pop's 1,000 career wins, but 600 is really special. Barnes, in his 28th season overall, became the 13th active NCAA Division I men's basketball coach to reach the 600 win milestone, including 398 wins at Texas in 17 years. It's a great milestone because it shows that he has been around for a while and that he's won a lot of games. Coach Barnes was very humble after the game, saying he has been blessed with such a good group of players and coaches every year. It's something great to see Coach Barnes accomplish in what some people would say a disappointing season. And, and during his tenure at Texas, he's been in 16 uh, tournaments out of his 17 years, so it's a great job for Coach Barnes. Great accomplishment, great job for a great head coach. Well, thanks for joining us in the studio tonight, Mark. Coming up, we'll talk about some women's basketball and see how the Longhorn baseball team fared against Rice this weekend. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to College Press Box. We had a lot of talk about men's basketball before the commercial break, but now it's time to switch gears and discuss the Lady Longhorns. The women's team took it on the road to face off against Oklahoma State in a midweek matchup last Wednesday. Texas started the game off strong with a 10-2 lead, but OSU quickly caught up to tie the game 16-16 with nine minutes remaining in the first half. The game turned in OSU's favor at that point, with the Cowgirls ending the first half at a 34-30 lead. OSU held the lead throughout the entire second half, though never leading by more than seven points. Despite a game-high total of 21 points by fr freshman Brooke McCarty, the Longhorns fell to OSU in a 66-60 loss, making the women 5-8 in conference play. After a tough loss to OSU, Texas looked to turn things around on a trip to Lawrence, Kansas against the Lady Jayhawks. Longhorns played Kansas evenly throughout the first half, but ran away with it in the second. Ariel Atkins and Brianna Taylor both scored 15 points to lead the Horns. Monty McGee Stafford also chipped in with 12 points and 16 rebounds. Asia Boyd had 16 for Kansas herself, but she could not keep the Jayhawks around for long. Texas gets a win on the road, 74-63. Taking out to the diamond this time, the sixth ranked Longhorn baseball team headed out to Houston this weekend to take on number 13 Rice, kicking off a four game series in style. The game itself didn't start that way though, as Rice came out of the gate strong with the score in the first inning and held the score one to zero all the way through the fifth. With the score tied one to one all the way through the seventh, senior Colin Shaw made the winning move of the game. Hitting a fly ball double with two runners already on base, Shaw allowed for a two score run that took the Longhorns up by two, with the final innings remaining scoreless and the Longhorns winning their first game of the season three to one. Well, Saturday did not go as well for the Horns as they lost both games of a doubleheader. Casey Clemens had his collegiate pitching debut in the first game, but had a tough time. He gave up eight runs in just three innings, including six in the first, and wound up with the loss. Texas was able to battle back, only to fall short 10-9. In the second game, Rice was able to jump out to another early lead. Trace Barrera hit his first home run of the season, but that was the only offense that the Longhorns could muster up as they fell to the Owls 5-2. After two tough losses on Valentine's Day, the Longhorn baseball team arrived at the field on Sunday, ready to avenge the previous day. Both teams remained scoreless for the first four innings of the final matchup, and Rice put on the pressure in the bottom of the fifth with a three-score inning. Texas wouldn't let Rice's 3-0 lead deter them, though, matching the performance with a three-score inning in the top of the seventh. Tied 3-3 with both teams scoreless through the final two innings, it took to a tenth round to decide the game. Making his first start of the season, freshman Michael McCann delivered a, the run-scoring double, which ultimately served as the game-winning move for Texas, ending a 2-2 series with a 4-3 win over Rice. Now that's the way to start off a college career. And when we come back, we'll be talking about Texas softball's performance in the Texas Classic Tournament. And we'll also check in on tennis and track and field. Stay tuned. And welcome back to College Press Box. Let's get right into it. Texas softball team took part in the Texas Classic this past weekend. They played five games in just three days, and it all started on Friday. Taking on Indiana, Purdue, Fort Wayne, that's a mouthful. Longhorns wasted no time starting off the weekend on the right foot. They scored 12 runs in the first three innings, and that was all they needed, winning 12-0 over IAPFW. Later that day, the Horns matched up against Wichita State. Texas was on its way to another win until blowing a three-run lead in the seventh. Pitcher Erica Wright could not finish off what she started, surrendering five runs in the final frame as the Longhorns fell 6-4 to the Shockers. On the second day of the Texas Classic, the softball team faced off against Colorado State and Wichita State, doubling up on wins this Valentine's Day and extending their season record to 7-3. In the first game against Colorado State, Texas scored the first two runs of the game in the third inning and never looked back. With strong efforts against CSU on both offense and defense, and a matched career high of strikeouts by sophomore pitcher Lauren Slatten at four, the Horns triumphed four to one in their first game of the day. 
taking the score into the double digits against Wichita State, pitching and fielding errors by Wichita led to an effortless score for Texas right off the bat in the first inning. Led by a two-run hit by Aaron Shireman in the third and a three-run home run by pinch hitter Gabby Smith in the sixth, the Longhorns recorded four runs in each inning, ending the day with a 10-4 win over Wichita State. And finally on Sunday, Texas wrapped up the weekend with one more match against Colorado State. Here's a look at the highlights from their Texas Classic finale. And Texas taking on Colorado State in the fifth and final game. We'll start off bottom one as Kelly Hansel doubles deep to left center, scoring not one but two runs on the play. Texas already up 3-0, increases that lead to 5-0 early on. Top of the second, Kilcrease with an infield hit, beats out the throw. Colorado State makes it a ball game 5-4. Bottom fifth now, Tunning doubles to deep left field. Hansel and CO score. Texas extends the lead 8-4. Bottom sixth now, CO bunts, and you hate to see this throwing air into right field. Texas just continuing to pile on the runs 9-4 at this point. Then, later on in the inning, with a single up the middle, Tunning will come around to score. And that would be the final nail in the coffin. Texas wins 11 to 4. Taking it to the courts, the ninth ranked men's tennis team headed up north to a chilly Chicago this weekend for the national team indoor championship. Good thing it was indoors. Playing a total of three games, the men rebounded from a 3 to 4 loss from reigning national indoor champions Ohio State, marking the men's first loss of the season. Facing off against Penn State in the second game of the weekend, the men swept the first four matches of the series to take the win 4 to 0. Faring almost as well against their third and last opponent on Sunday, the Longhorns extended their season record to nine wins and one loss with a 4 to 1 victory over 13th ranked Columbia. Track and field had a busy weekend with competitors traveling to two different cities in anticipation for the Big 12 championship meet. The long distance runners went to Seattle while the sprinters, jumpers and throwers headed up to Arkansas. The women's 4x400 team set the record for fastest time in the nation this season en route to a win. The men's 4x400 also got the win with the fastest time in the Big 12 all year. Triple jumper Nick Finn never trailed on the day as he jumped his way to an easy win. NCAA defending champ Ryan Krauser bested the field and shot put, and the women's 200 meters team also went home winners. Contrary to track and field's weekend winnings, the, men, the women's tennis team didn't fare nearly as well in their trip to California to take on Pepperdine and USC. On Saturday, the 30th ranked Pepperdine team delivered an upset to the number 25 Longhorns in the first matchup of the weekend. Texas opened the contest by securing the doubles point, but only managed to log one more point in the remaining matches, falling to Pepperdine with a 2-5 final score. The women returned to the courts on Sunday in Los Angeles only to meet an even more disappointing fate against the 12th ranked USC team. With a complete sweep of the matchups, USC added a mark in Texas's loss column. The Longhorns will head up north to resume competition against Northwestern and Michigan in two weeks with a 2-3 and three record for the season. We'll be heading into our final break here, but stick around. When we come back, College Press Box's own Reese Miller will talk to some fellow Longhorns about their Valentine's Day, and we'll let you know where to catch all the sports action in the coming week. Thanks for staying with us, and welcome back to College Press Box. Was love in the air for you this past weekend? Well, College Press Box's own Reese Miller headed out to talk with some fellow Longhorns about just that in honor of Valentine's Day this past weekend. Reese Miller with this week's Man on the Street, Valentine's Day this past Saturday. We'll see who is feeling the love on the 40 Acres. Who would be your Texas student athlete crush or Valentine? Honestly, I'm not even too sure who like the volleyball players are, but probably one of the volleyball players for sure. Um, I probably have to go um, stereotypical with Malik Jefferson. I'm going to go with Lily Vanderzee. She's a basketball player because uh, I played basketball with her one time. And so what I would do is we would study psychology together. I don't know any athletes, so I'm just going to say Colt McCoy. <laughs> I don't know any athletes. Honestly, my Valentine would probably be Miles on Yevale. Oh, He's so precious. I love him so much. And what would you get Charlie Strong for Valentine's Day this year? Uh, candy Hearts. Oh man, um, what does he need done? Uh, anything, what, uh, whatever you want, I'll do it. 
and maybe take us to an actual football game? Honestly, probably nothing. He's not my favorite person. I don't know, uh, a big chocolate football. Food. I don't know who that is, so nothing. Finally, the biggest Texas student athlete bromance on campus. Was it like Jordan Shipley and Colt McCoy? Vince Young from back in the day. Vince, Vince Young and who? And me. Well, I'm going to say, let's go Kai Loxley and Tyrone Swoops. Got to be back in the day um, with uh, Colt and Jason. And yeah, that's, it's got to be who it is. Colt and Jason, you heard it here. From Colt and Jason, if only I could find a bromance like that, or any Valentine. Reese Miller, College Press Box. It's a busy week as usual in Longhorn sports coming up. On Tuesday, men's baseball gets their home opener against University of Texas San Antonio. And men's basketball faces off against Oklahoma at 8 p.m. on ESPN2. Women's basketball will take to the court on Wednesday the 18th against Kansas State at 7 p.m. on the Longhorn Network. Men's baseball will host Minnesota for a home series this weekend and softball will be at the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic in California. And men's tennis will face off against North Carolina at 6 p.m. And then Saturday, men's basketball hosts Iowa State and what should be a good one. Also on Saturday, track and field will compete at the Alex Wilson Invite. And Sunday, women's golf heads to New Orleans for the All-State Sugar Bowl Intercollegiate. Before we go, we'd like to honor another African-American athlete during Black History Month. Aretha Swindle became the first African-American to play on UT's varsity basketball team. She's also the first UT player named to the 1978 USA national team. She's in Texas record books for holding the all-time leader in rebounds with 1,759, also scoring 1,795 points in her career as a Longhorn. Swindle was inducted into the Women's Hall of Honor in 2001 for her career on and off the court. To learn more information, you can read the Aretha Swindle Longhorn Legend page. Well, I don't know about you, Jake, but I'll be holed up in my room this weekend for the start of the 2015 NASCAR season and, of course, Sunday's Daytona 500. What are your sport watching plans for the weekend? Well, I'm excited about the return of the NBA after the All-Star break. Should be an exciting second half to the season, especially with the trade deadline coming up this Thursday. Well, that sounds like a great plan, and though I think none can compare to mine, I'd love to elaborate, but sadly, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for tuning in to College Press Box. You can catch us here on TSTV every Monday night at 9.30, and make sure to follow us on Twitter at College Press Box. And for the best sports debate on the 40 acres, turn into tune into College Crossfire on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. You can follow them on Twitter, too, at College X Fire. From everyone here in the studio, Master Control, Jake and myself, have a great night. And if they trying to doubt the South, that's fine. We riding dirty at the same time, shine. For all the dope boys pushing on the ground. For all the dope girls keeping them in line.